For all of the time the city has had home rule, it has had an African-American mayor, and for most of the time, a majority African-American council. What do you see as the disadvantage of having a council that is not majority African-American? Well, I think I just try to um, make it clear that people want to have their leadership reflect who they are. And the majority of the District of Columbia is still African-American, 50% um, is African-American, so there's a natural tendency to want your own. Same question to Anita. Paul, sort of. can I get in the yes. conversation? Mm -hmm. yeah, because you started out talking, I'm, I'm Perry Red, for those who are listening and He's don't know. He's a songwriter, but he doesn't. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm insulted. Okay, Perry, go. I, go. I truly am. I'm insulted because this is the same dynamic that, that, Blacks in this city talk about, I'm at the table with you having a conversation about the, ask me talking about blacks in the city being under, uh, underrepresented on council, right? Seven of the 13 members on the council are white. The majority of the population of the city is black. And so what, it, what, what has happened is blacks, of course, feel like their voice is not going to be heard. If I it, think the last census is, shows that blacks are under 50 percent of 50, the population. 50.7, according to the census That's that right. I took off the website yesterday. There you go, bro. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, again, I feel insulted because what I say is, is secondary. So, uh, again— How is we, what you say secondary? Because I'm being corrected by, by, by mm -hmm. Kojo. It's not like I came unprepared. I didn't. I thought I it know was it looks slightly similar. under And 50%. that's okay. That's that's okay. And, and so my point is, this is the dynamic we have in the city, where we're sitting at the table, and I'm, 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 I'm just taking notes at who the questions are, are directed to. So that's the, the dynamic we have in the city when you talk about gentrification. Matt Fruman alluded to who benefits and, and, and who, who's, uh, who's suffering. Um, at the hands of this great growth right. that we have in the city. So, Perry, what I'm asking, though, are specifics on this. I mean, mm -hmm. I, and we can go around the room and talk about how we want affordable housing, but where are the specifics? Sure. The specifics include inclusionary zoning, holding these developers accountable, but not adhering to the rules that are already in place, taking away their tax incentives. The city council doesn't have the political will to do that. That's why I'm running in this race, because no one is speaking for the underserved. I've seen, I, matter of fact, just yesterday I saw a woman with two children turned away from the shelter saying that she was trying to get into a shelter with her children. We got 600 kids over D.C. General living under deplorable, uh, uh, under deplorable conditions, but of course, those, you know, we, we, we are building these great and grand projects. When, when we walked down Georgia Avenue with the Georgia Avenue Development Task Force, we looked at two developments, right, 40, 40 uh, units in one, 30 in the other, and they supposed to have, at least by, by what the city council mandates, 30% of those units supposed to be affordable housing. Well, guess what? Two in one unit, uh, two in one building, and three in the other. That's a crime and that we're executing against the most vulnerable people in this city. That's who I'm fighting for. Perry Red, allow me yes. to step back and have you answer the question that I put earlier about why do you think it is important for there to be a majority of black members on the council, and I'll tell you why I asked the question. The question I asked is because of the assumption that if a member of the council happens to be black, that member of the council will be an advocate for poor people. I don't happen to agree with that. Do you? Well, obviously not. Look at our council right now. We enjoy a four, $417 million surplus. Oh, my goodness, we're doing so wonderful in the city, uh, uh, fiscally speaking. But socially speaking, we're, 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 we're disenfranchising uh, the most vulnerable people. So what difference does it make if the membership of the council is majority black or white? Well, what difference it makes is this. Uh, we have a legacy in our country of, of treating people of color um, less than respectable. And so with, with, this, uh, uh, with the, uh, the city council being a majority black, what we have is, is uh, the dynamic where uh, uh, Washingtonians are forced forced to look at the injustices that are executed against the most vulnerable. For example, the school closures. Look at the majority of the school closures. Fifteen schools are slated to be closed. In poor neighborhoods, most of them. In Ward 7 and 8, the majority in Ward 7 and 8. How many in Ward 2? How many in Ward 1? I know, I don't hear anything. How many in Ward 3? No one will say. But the fact of the matter is, 
what we've learned from history, not just Washington's history, but America's history, that whites, when Europeans are in control of any elected uh, body, they do not care for the most vulnerable who happen to be people of color. So that is the chief reason why that's important.